Hi, this is the first video in a set of videos on the topic of networks. Can be quite a tricky topic because of so many details involved, but this will be a nice gentle introduction and we'll work our way up from there. So networks are connections between nodes in order to share resources. So nodes, it's node is another word for a device. Um, node is more for a kind of theoretical term which we'll be using occasionally, so be aware of it. And the main purpose is to share resources, to share things like printers and data between other computers, other nodes on the network. And um, obviously there's a big advantage to be able to share things like software, for example. But having a network leaves you more open to security risk because without a network, the only weak point in your system is your system itself. But if you connect to a network, then you're creating more access points. But we'll talk about this in the cybersecurity video. There are a few ways to classify networks, the first of which I'm going to look at two in this video, the first of which is in regards to its actual size. So the first of the three kind of subcategories we're going to look at is a personal area network or a PAN. And this is a network that's within the range of an individual person, so it operates around a person, like Bluetooth connections. And usually these have a range of about 10 meters. So you might have wireless headphones that connect to your phone, your phone might connect to your laptop. It's over a very small range and this is a personal area network. A second, much more common term is local area network or LAN, and this is a network that connects devices close to each other, so not quite 10 meters close, usually the same building, the same house, or the same school. The best way to understand LAN is to contrast it with the other main category, which is wide area networks or WANs. These are networks over a much larger area, usually in several locations, and the internet is the best example of this. So the, the main difference is in a WAN, some infrastructure is usually owned by someone else. So if you have a network, let's say a school network, your school owns all the cables, all the infrastructure within that network. It's not owned by a, a secondary party. Whereas a wide area network, let's say your school is part of an academy trust, you've got maybe 50 schools in this trust. They might all have a network that connects each other, a wide area network. And the connections between them, if they're spread in different locations, aren't going to be owned by the school. The school isn't going to, you know, install their own cables connecting all their schools. It's going to be going through some other infrastructure owned by someone else, like an internet service provider, like Virgin Media or Sky or so on. And the best example of a WAN is the internet, as I said, which is made up of loads of individual LANs. And the whole concept of the internet is that it's a shared resource. People use shared connections which is kind of by definition what a WAN is. It's not just about size in this case, it's also about who owns the infrastructure. But we can also look at networks in terms of their behavior. The first type we'll look at are client server networks. And in these networks, every device, every node is either a client or a server. So a client is there just to request a resource off the server. So a server holds a resource like a web page and it serves the client by sending it to the client. So they need the other one to exist for them to have a purpose. When a client wants this resource, it establishes a connection with the server over the network. So this is the arrangement that this network actually looks like and is to do with behavior, so obviously whether it's a client or a server. So in the middle we've got a server here and these are clients that are connecting with the server and then they can communicate and they can get the resource from the server. So a bit of evaluation, servers are often made to back up and store data centrally, especially in like an organization, you might have a central server that backs up all the user's data. As I said, they're also used for things like websites. But servers are quite specialized pieces of equipment, they don't, they're not general purpose computers usually. And that means they can be expensive and also difficult to run. You might need a specialist administrator to be able to set up and run a server. The type of networks that contrast with this are peer-to-peer -peer networks. And in this network, there is no central server. So in the client-server network, the devices are either going to be a client or a server. They don't switch roles at all, really. This is their kind of set configuration. Whereas in a peer-to-peer -peer network, they kind of can switch between being a client and a server. So they have equal responsibility in this case. In a client-server network, the server has the responsibility. It can decide whether it wants to give the resource to the clients or not. Whereas in a peer-to-peer -peer network, they're equal in responsibility, and each has the ability to work as both a client and a server. So if one device has some data the other one wants, it can act as a server, and the other one can act as a client. So it can kind of switch roles in this regard. So it has the ability to work as both. Not at the same time, but they can switch between. So to summarize, these two types of network kind of revolve around the behavior of the networks, as in what role the devices play in them. On a kind of separate note, while we're introducing networks, let's talk about some factors that affect the performance of a network. This might be a common exam question. So performance, we can look at kind of three types of three characteristics of performance perhaps. First of which is latency, which crops up all the time in computer science. This is to do with the delay, i.e. how fast signals travel, what's the response time between you 
requesting something and getting a response and so on. That's what latency means. And bandwidth is another term you might have heard, and this is the maximum rate of data transfer, and this is in bits per second. So data transfer is always in bits per second. So this is like how much capacity a network has, how much data can be sent at one time. The final one we'll look at is error rate. There are loads more that are kind of factors or components of the performance, but these are the three simplest ones. So error rate is the rate of corruption. How often does data get corrupted and have to be resent? We rarely see corruptions, but they happen all the time. All that happens is they just get the data gets resent, and there are protocols that handle um, errors. There are loads of factors you could talk about in regards to network performance. These are just a few that I've come up with, but are related to what we'll be looking at in the future videos. So we'll look at wired and wireless connections. Generally, wired connections are much faster than wireless connections. Having said that, bandwidths do vary. So in some wired connections, the bandwidth would be less than what you get in wireless, so in Ethernet you might get 10 megabits per second, whereas in wireless you might get up to gigabits per second, although this is very uh, rare. So this is kind of a range you can get for bandwidths for wireless, but obviously sp the speed and the amount of data you can send aren't, I mean they're linked, but they're not exactly the same. The reason why this might be is Ethernet is usually just plugged into one device, whereas wireless, often there are multiple devices accessing the router at the same time, which is why it needs a higher bandwidth. Yeah, so as I say, bandwidth is shared across the network, so it can become congested if you have too many devices using up all the bandwidth. Also, wireless has usually quite a small range. The signal degrades quickly, the waves spread out, and the signal might be blocked if you live in a house that's quite old, for example. You might have thick walls, and that means the Wi-Fi signal can't get through the walls. And um, this also does happen with cables, so with wired connections. The signal does degrade eventually, but usually a lot slower, and there are ways to kind of resurrect the signal uh, as it goes along. You also can get interference depending on what medium you're using. This happens to both wired and wireless connections. So with wired, especially fiber optic, um, if it's you can get interference, it can spread out. And with signals, if you have say two wireless devices connecting on the same frequency, they can interfere, and this leads to what is known as data collisions, which is to do with the error rate. And another factor is to do with topologies. So we'll look at topologies in a future video, the arrangement of a network, which is another category of networks. And certain topologies have higher error rates, like the bus topology has a frequency much higher of, error, of data collisions than the other topologies. So if you got asked, these are a few factors you could talk about, especially focused on wired versus wireless, which is an important part of this topic. And I hope you can see the distinction between the PAN, WANs and LANs and the client server and peer-to-peer -peer networks.